In the second lecture, we'll go through the um, frequently used non-dimensional coefficients and the quantities and the principles used to do the non-dimensionalization. The first two coefficients we are looking at is, are the lift coefficient and drag coefficient. And I want to move your attention to the denominator, half rho v squared times s. This year, the same denominator. And if we multiply the dimensions of rho v squared and s together, we should find this should have the same dimension as force. Since we are looking at um, flight dynamics, and we're we also interested in the moment and the moment coefficients. And they are showing here, we have three moments and the three moment coefficients. And we already know half rho v square has a, has a dimension of force. And now in the denominator, we times uh, either c bar or b as a characteristic length. So in, together in the denominator, we, we have the dimension of moment. That's why we use uh, half row square s times c bar or either b as a denominator for the non-dimensionalization of the moment. OK, so now the question is why we use b or c bar in a denominator? Or the question could be when we use b for as a characteristic lens for the moment coefficient non-dimensionalization. OK. So I give you a few seconds to, to think. Well, the answer, now I'm giving the answer, because, for example, CM, because CM is about the longitudinal motion around the y-axis. So in that, in that motion, C bar should be the characteristic lens because it's along the longitudinal axis. But in C, C or in the CM, they are concerning the, the aircraft's the lateral directional motion, and B is along that direction. So that's a wingspan. So that's why we use B um, as a characteristic lens in the denominator for CL and CN. And I also want to mention here, the L here is not the lift but rolling moment. So don't mix them up. So in here, the very important thing is why we use B or C bar as the, uh, in, in the denominator as the uh, characteristic lens. The next group of uh, non-dimensional quantities you are looking at are the non-dimensional linear velocity, u hat, v hat, w hat. And apparently they are um, calculated by dividing the true air speed v. Okay, the next group of uh, non-dimensional quantities are the non-dimensional angular velocity, p hat, q hat, and r hat. So the question is why we use uh, this type of non-dimensionalization. And in order to understand this, we need to do some um, dimensional analysis similar as we did for the moment. Okay, so this is called dimensional analysis. We use p as example. So p angular velocity, which is the uh, rolling angular velocity, and it has dimension of one over s. And we can see its den denominator is uh, b divided by b. Okay, b is a linear velocity, so its unit or dimension is meter per second, and b is a wingspan, so it has a dimension of meter. And uh, together. Um, the denominator has a dimension of 1 over s, so it's, similar, it's the same as the angular velocity dimension. So they have the same dimension, and that's why we use b divide, uh, v divided by b as a denominator, and it, usually we, we, we attach half 1 over 2 to the, as a coefficient. So now we have the same question. Why we use c bar is highlighted in here for Q, non-dimensionalization, but we use B for P and R. And apparently, it's the same reason as the um, moment coefficient, because Q is a pitching angular rate. And that's why we use C bar, because C bar is in the longitudinal axis. 
But for P and R, the lateral directional motion we use B, which is uh, wingspan, as a characteristic length. Now we are looking at the non-dimensional ton. T hat equals T divided by tau. Tau is a denominator for the non-dimensionalization. And now the question is, how do we find out the ex ex expression of tau? And uh, we can assume tau equals this, and we can carry out dimensional analysis. Right? It's the same as we did for the uh, for CM and other parameters. Okay? So if we assume tau equals m rho b v c s d, and the task now is to determine b, c, and d. Okay, so we rewrite tau, and we know um, tau should have the same dimension of tan, which is second, and on, so we get this relation. The left-hand side is second, the, dim the, the dimension of tan. On the right-hand side is expression of the uh, right-hand side of tau. Okay, so now if we reorganize this equation and uh, regroup them, and for example, we know the right hand side should have the same dimension of tan, so minus c should be 1, and uh, kilogram, the power of kilogram should be, be 0, and the exponent of m meter should also be 0 then it can be eliminated. So by doing comparison between the left-hand side and the right-hand side, we can get this group of three equations and we solve it. We can have b equals minus 1, c equals minus 1, and d equals minus 1. This is a dimensional analysis and this is a way we get, uh, get out b, c, and d. Okay. So knowing the coefficients, and we can write down tau uh, being m divided by half rho v s so we put one, one and a half as a conventional parameter, which is a kind of established use, conventional way. Okay, now it's another example of carrying out the dimensional analysis. So we will see the last uh, two non-dimensional quantities. Showing here is uh, non-dimensional density. And uh, we, the denominator is mu, it's called the relative density. Actually, just let you know, we have two relative densities and mu1 and mu2, and we can see the difference in here. Mu1 has C bar as a characteristic lens, but mu2 has B as a characteristic lens. Through the practice in the previous uh, slides, we should know why, when we use mu1 and when we use mu2, right? So mu1 is for the longitudinal non-dimensionalization, and mu2 is uh, relative, relative density used for lateral directional analysis. Okay, so I give you a task to do. Can you validate mu1 and mu2, their dimensions through dimensional analysis, which means mu1 and mu2 has the same dimension of density. So this is a task for you to do. And the last bit of uh, non-dimensional quantities are the non-dimensional moment of inertia and which are the small ix, small iy, small iz. And again, if you look at the denominator and there are slight difference, c bar square and b square, why we have this difference? Apparently it's the same answer. iy is for the longitudinal motion and ix and iz are for the lateral directional motion, okay? And again, can you validate the denominator has the same dimension of the moment of inertia? That's for the practice of dimensional analysis. Okay, so once we are here, we need to close this mini lecture too. Thank you.